Please go with me to Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. Just want to pick verse number 9 and verse number 10. So we're praying about the prophetic destiny of the nation. Amen. Amen. Now God has spoken to Abraham, he said to him that your descendants would be in captivity for 400 years. But after that period, I'm going to bring them out. So God had spoken a prophetic word to Abraham. And the prophetic destiny for the nation of Israel was that now God was going to bring them and take them into the promised land. Amen. Amen. And now we know the Lord has already delivered them. And God is now leading them into their prophetic destiny, the promised land. But as they are moving into their prophetic destiny, into their place of freedom, into the place where God has appointed for them, the enemy is in pursuit of them. So as we move into our prophetic destiny, there is also an enemy that is pursuing us. Even though the enemy had already been defeated before, he is not the one to give up easy. And so he is still in pursuit. But I'm reading this so that I can show us the resolve of the enemy in the pursuit of God's people to stop them from coming in into the prophet of this thing. And so the Bible said in verse number 9, the enemy said, the enemy said, I will pursue. So this is the resolve of the enemy. I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My desire, the desire of the enemy, so in as much as also God has a desire to bring us into a prophetic destiny, the enemy has a contrary desire to stop us from accessing that prophetic destiny. Mm -hmm. And so the enemy is giving us, the, you know, just um, revealing to us the intent of the enemy. So he says, my desire shall be satisfied on them. Then he says, I will draw my sword. So meaning he's declaring war. The enemy is declaring war. He's saying, you are not getting into your prophetic destiny. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Praise the name of the Lord. So that is the result of the enemy. So that even as we talk about the prophetic destiny of the nation, it's not just going to be an easy sailing into that destiny. There's going to be war involved. Now, in verse number 10, which is very key, because of what the enemy has said that he's going to do, God also is not limited in what he has to do to take his people into their prophetic destiny. So the Bible says that you, God, you blew with your wind. The sea covered them. They sank like wind led in the mighty waters. Then God has basically now like, he has overridden the result of the enemy. And I want us to pray that every pursuit of the enemy concerning the prophetic destiny of God's people and this nation, that the Lord will overturn it in the name of Jesus. That the pursuit of the enemy, the, and the enemy that is assailing us as we try to get into that destiny, you realize that there is, it seems like there is a struggle in getting into this destiny. It seems like there is a contention in trying to get into this destiny. It's because of the result of the enemy. He has said, I will. It's the same thing he said in Isaiah chapter 14, when he said that I will ascend. I will make, I'll become like the most. It is the same result. And because we know the history of that result, how it ended, because the Bible says that he was cast out. Even in this result that he has concerning stopping us from accessing our prophetic destiny, God is going to overturn it in Jesus' name. As I want us to pray right now, in Jesus' name, that concerning the prophetic destiny of God's people and this nation, including your own personal prophetic destiny, I want you to pray that every assail of the enemy over this prophetic destiny, by the resource, because you see one of the things that is available to God, the resource of God in dealing with the enemy, he called, he's just showing us one of the resources, his wind, he blew. There are many resources available to God in dealing with the enemy, but in this case, God just used the wind. Amen. So I want us to pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, concerning the prophetic destiny that you have for this nation and for my life, that the thing that the enemy is pursuing me, I pray that today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let that thing be overturned. Yes. Let the pursuit of the enemy concerning the prophetic destiny for this nation be overturned in Jesus' name. Yes. 
The same way God overthrew the chariots of Pharaoh in, in the Red Sea. Let the chariots of the enemy pursue our destiny be overthrown today. In the name of Jesus, let's rise up on our feet and pray. Let us pray that prayer concerning the assailing and the pursuit of the enemy. Concerning the destinies of God, concerning the destiny of this nation, just pray and ask the Lord anything that the enemy is using to pursue us, to stop us from getting into that destiny. Today we declare, let it be overturned over. We pray that let the wind of God begin to blow. Let the wind of God begin to blow. Let the wind of God begin to blow and overturn over every pursuit of the enemy over my destiny. Every pursuit of the enemy over the destiny of this sister. He that asks for coming into the place of destiny fulfillment. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, raise up your voice right now and pray. And ask the Lord, Lord, overturn, overturn every pursuit of the enemy. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus, overturn every pursuit of the enemy. Concerning my destiny, concerning the destiny of this nation, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we declare that we are moving forward, we are moving forward into that destiny, and we will enter that destiny in the name of the Lord Jesus. The enemy is being overtaken in the name of Jesus. So the enemy has said that I will pursue. Let that pursuit of the enemy suffer the same consequences. It suffered when you pursue the children of Israel in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Let that resolve of the enemy be terminated today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we declare we will enter into our prophetic destiny as a nation. We will come into the place of the fulfillment of that destiny as a nation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Desire to steal the destiny. His desire to destroy that destiny. His desire to, to basically dis dismantle that destiny. It is a very strong desire, but we thank God because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Praise the Lord. And the last item I want us to pray is Ezekiel chapter 11. So the same way the enemy is saying, I will pursue, the enemy also has his own agents who stand and sit at the gates mm. and they do the bidding of the enemy. Mm. They do the bidding of the enemy. In Ezekiel chapter 11, I want to read from verse number one. Then the Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the east gate of the Lord's house, which faces eastward. And there at the door of the gate were 25 men, among whom I saw Josaniah the son of Azur and Pelatiah the son of Benaiah, princes of the people. And he said to me, Son of man, these are the men who devise iniquity and give wicked counsel in this city, who say, this is what they say. If the time is not near, it's not yet time for that day. They, and they are wicked council. They, they have formed a wicked council at the gates of the city, at the gates of the nation. They are like wicked gatekeepers of the nation and they are making declarations and they are saying it's not yet time for these people to enter into that destiny. They are saying it's not yet time for these families, for individuals, for communities, for regions to come into their prophetic destiny. And so they are in this place where they are making declarations. And then they're saying that the time is not near to build houses. This city is the this city, this city, um, in this city who say the time is not near to build houses, this city is the cauldron, and we are the meat. Then the Lord says to Ezekiel, therefore prophesy against them. Amen. Prophesy, O Son of Man. Amen. Then the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said to me, Speak. Thus says the Lord, thus you have said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come to your mind. You have multiplied your sin, but then uh, I want to go to verse number 13. Now it happened while I was prophesying that Pelatiel, the son of Benaiah, who was one of the men who was sitting at the, city, at the gate of the city, he died. Then I fell on my face and cried out with the Lord, to the Lord with a loud voice and said, Ah, Lord God, will you make a complete end of the remnant of Israel? So these are men, wicked men who are sitting at the gate of the city and they are just saying it's not a time. But the Bible said in Psalm 119, verse 126, that it is time for you to act O God. So I want us to pray and to declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whereas the wicked gatekeepers are declaring it's not a time. We as the righteous of God. Let me read Daniel chapter 7 to just to just um I know you know this scripture because um Daniel chapter 7 to show you also that in as much as they are wicked gatekeepers, they are righteous gatekeepers. And we are the righteous gatekeepers, right? Let's take it Daniel chapter 7.
Alléluia. Actually, it's, it's Daniel chapter 4, sorry. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. It's a long story because of time. I'm not going to say a lot of things. But Daniel chapter 4, verse 17, he says that this decision is by the decree of the watchers, mm -hmm. the righteous gatekeepers, mm -hmm. and the sentence by the word of the holy ones. It's not God. It is a people that God has set as gatekeepers mm -hmm. who will decree the righteousness of God over the land. Who will declare that the prophetic destiny of the nation will be fulfilled? He says that this decree, and he was talking about King Nebuchadnezzar, it is not God who brought King Nebuchadnezzar down, it is the watchers. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And saying the sentence by the word of the holy ones, in order that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men, gives it to whomever he will and sets it over and, and sets over it the lowest of men. And so I want us to pray. And I just want us to declare in the name of Jesus that Kenya, it is time. It is time to enter prophetic destiny in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every other contrary declaration that says it's not yet time, in the name of Jesus, we reverse it. We reverse it in the name of Jesus. Come on, raise up your voice and declare right now in the name of Jesus. Kenya, it is time for us to enter our prophetic destiny in Jesus' mighty name. As the watchers of God, as the righteous ones of God, we declare in the name of Jesus, it is time. It is time for this country to enter its prophetic destiny. And so, we enforce the word of the Lord over this season and over this time, over this country. And we declare, Kenya is coming into the fullness of its prophetic destiny. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we override. We override every wicked decree against this nation. We override every wicked proclamation against this nation. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we override by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the speaking of the blood, we override every wicked declaration contrary to what God has purposed and intended for this nation and for his people. In the mighty name of Jesus, we overturn every wicked decree, we overturn every unrighteous decree over this nation, every word that has been spoken and declared from the pit of hell saying that it is not yet time for the people of God to come into the fullness of their prophetic destiny. We overrule it by the blood of Jesus. We overrule it by the declaration of the word of the Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we overturn every wicked declaration, even in the heavens in Jesus' mighty name. We overturn, we overrule, we declare every enchantment null and void by the declaration of the saints of God, by the declaration of the Holy Ones. Declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so today as the ecclesia, we stand in our place and we declare in every mountain of society, in every mountain of influence, every wicked gatekeeper is coming down. In the mighty name of Jesus, every wicked gatekeeper is coming down. And we set up righteous gatekeepers in their place. In the mighty name of Jesus, we set up righteous gatekeepers in their place. In the mighty name of Jesus, and even concerning governmental authority, we stand and declare in the name of Jesus, Lord, you who sets up kings and brings them down, you who sees the hearts of men, you know who has the intentions in their hearts. You say concerning David, for I have known him. He is a man after my own heart. He will shepherd my people according to my heart desire. So we pray, O God, even concerning governmental leaders, in the name of the Lord Jesus, anyone that God does not have the intention of fulfilling your will and your purposes, O God, do not allow them to come into presence of authority. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, whoever they are, let them be counseled. And then let the righteous ones of God take their place. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen